Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Lakeland Locker Room. Once again, I'm John Weber, joined today by Jim Zabrowski, the head football coach at Lakeland College. Jim, as usual on the show, we like to get right to it. No messing <laughs> around, of course. So, well, first off, congratulations on Thank your you. first uh, first victory as a head coach, Thank first you. victory at Lakeland College, uh, the season opening uh, win over uh, Tri-State from Indiana. What a great game, a 30-13 to victory. Yeah, it was, it was, it was uh, fun. You know, I don't know what else to say. I was, you're nervous, you're excited, all the above, and all of a sudden, you know, everything happens, and, and thank goodness we can with a win. The kids played exceptionally hard. Mm -hmm. um, we had a few too many penalties in the game. <laughs> Felt a little overzealous, but the kids played really hard. I thought the effort was great. I, I thought the crowd was great. I thought um, the excitement was there. The stadium looked great. I think it was just a fun atmosphere back there, and the kids, I think, enjoyed themselves playing, which is a big thing, and, and we came out victorious. Mm -hmm. Of course, Tri-State's had a legendary program, very successful the past few years. A new coach this year in Bob Fry, the former coach at McMurray mm -hmm. College. How did you prepare going into the game? I know we talked a little bit about this on our last show. We did. We watched a lot of tape where Bob was at McMurray. Thank goodness they stayed primarily on the stuff they showed. That first couple of games, you never know what you're going to see. Right. They could throw stuff at you. So Bob said a lot on what they did on the tape we saw from McMurray, and we uh, – we, we kind of, I mean, we're pretty good friends, so we talk a little bit about what we each one of us do, does, so we are not totally blind on the deal. Mm -hmm. So we actually kind of knew what was going to happen, and then all of a sudden he just got to let the kids play, and I didn't know if our kids would, I didn't know, I didn't know what would happen. I didn't know, you can't tell on tape how big kids are, how fast mm -hmm. kids are, and, and, and you know, I was really pleased with the way our kids, I thought our kids played physical and fast, I think that helped us out. Because once we have preparation, it's you know how it is in baseball too. You you can prepare right. all you want. Sooner or later, the kids just got to play, and, mm -hmm. and they played pretty well. Mm -hmm. And preparation is key. How do you guys prepare for that before the game? And this is a, a 1:30 start on Saturday, and of course next week versus Cardinals mm -hmm. is going to be completely different. But how do you guys do it on a Saturday morning? What do you do personally? And what do you do with the team? Right, Saturday. <laughs> you want to know what we? <laughs> this week we ended up. Our coaches were out there. Coach Creek, our defense coordinator, was climbing up a scaffolding <laughs> in a shirt and tie, trying to move that back. They had too close to the end zone. We had a lot of game day preparation to do before. Sometimes I think you sometimes you love playing at home, but the things you have to do before the game takes a lot, a lot of time, more than I thought it would take. So we were doing a lot of preparation, getting stuff ready, making sure the field was ready, mm -hmm. um, getting the kids to breakfast by 9:30, have a little meeting. I think what we try to do here is what we did where I've been in the past is if you don't know what you're doing by Friday or Saturday you're in more trouble than you could imagine. Right. So we don't say a lot, we don't want to give them a lot of different thoughts. We just say, eat breakfast, quick meeting. We just want, I just told them, play our models, reach your full potential. I said, mm -hmm. play hard, play fast, play physical, let the scoreboard take care of themselves. We didn't really give them a lot of different thoughts. We said, go out there. I think our kids were so excited. Hot day, it was like 87, 88 degrees, yeah. I think. Uh, I think some of our kids were like, got so juiced up, they started cramp cramped early. And, mm -hmm. but, but I think as the game wore on, our conditioning helped us out because I think we kind of wore on them as the game went on. But we didn't do a lot, just kind of get them loose, get them going. I think excitement just took over so fast for them. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about you personally now. Where were you at as far as the game goes? <laughs> I, it, it, let's face it, it's your first, your right. first uh, head coaching game, or first game as a head coach. So you got to feel a little bit of excitement, a little bit of nerves. But it sounds also that you were so busy and so, you know, getting so prepared right. that maybe some of those things yeah. were secondary. Yeah, that's what I told my wife too. I said, I go, Heather, this game's going to all of a sudden show up 1 30, the whistle's going to blow them and be like, whoa. It's yep. game time yeah. because of the preparation, because all the things you do, you know, as a head coach, behind the scenes and mm -hmm. stuff, you never have to do it as an assistant. As an assistant coach, you can watch tape, relax, get ready for the game. I have one little side of offense or at that mm -hmm. time. Well, now you're looking at both sides of the ball. You make sure your special teams are okay. And all of a sudden, the game just came upon me. So I don't know about so much nervousness or maybe I just blew off the nerves that I won't get nervous, but it was exciting. Mm -hmm. And I, just, I, I think you and me were talking after the game, and I said, how did your first game go, and so on. And it's not so much you're hoping you have more victories somewhere along the line, but just you felt comfortable the kids were prepared. Right. And you really said, you know, I've done all I can do, I think. Now all I got to do is let the kids play. Don't overcoach. Don't get nervous. I didn't want them to show that I'd be nervous mm -hmm. or get too excited or too whatever you want to call it. So I want to make the kids realize that, hey, have fun. I told them I go just have I tried to have fun. It's tough having fun. I mean, you're getting nervous, but you just have fun. It's a great experience. It's great, you know. I'm blessed to be in this profession. I said, kids, just have fun and play. Be, be, realize how lucky you are to be a football player at a, at a college and playing on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, it's few and far between to get that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about the game now. You guys jumped off to a seven nothing lead at the end of the first quarter, yeah. but uh, obviously on your first drive of the game, it really set the tone. <laughs> and I got to give you credit; it took a lot of guts to do what you did. Your first, your first again. Obviously, we said it three times already. Your first game in, in the first series, you guys pull a, a fake yeah, punt. Yeah, we, we went three and out that first drive almost, and we got to fourth down. And what we have seen on tape was they they do something where we just set up a fake. If they line up in a certain formation mm -hmm. defensively. We just run the fake, and all I have to say is tell the personal protector, 
yeah or no, you know, yes or no. Mm -hmm. And I told Matt, it was like fourth and 10, I think fourth and nine, we are on our 43 or 44, so it wasn't that terrible. Right. Whereas I said, hey, if it's there, Matt, take it. Mm -hmm. And he took it, and I think it added, I think it got the kids to realize that, man, this guy is, if it's there, he's gonna take it. I'm not gonna practice stuff and not run it, so right. they, and they pull it off. You know, we can see how they want about, oh, great call, but it's not a great call unless the kids execute. Mm -hmm. So the good thing is we repped it so much, the kids felt comfortable. I think we have oh, actually yeah. set up here on tape if you want yeah. to explain it. Yeah, Matt Berenger took it. We ended up pulling both of our big guys, Nick Zeck, who's a basketball player, and Shane Shrimp, and, and we gashed it for 35. And you can see the excitement on the sideline, and they were set up. They had six guys on one side of the field, and we just took it the other way. Here's the second play right after that. You guys went to uh, the fullback out of the backfield. Why don't you go Yeah, we, we were pretty successful running in between the tackles. Our big play off this is our play action pass with Brent's face. Travis Jervis played an exceptional game, dumped in the flat. They kept trying to stop the run. We got our fullback in the flat, so I gained about 14. That play was really, we probably ran that play eight times in the game. Um, this is going to be um, our fullback again, Travis Jervis on belly. Sorry about that. I forgot what I put in there. Travis gained 10. Travis had an exceptional game of fullback. Our O line just played outstanding. Here's Nick Hunter ran up with 129 yards in the game, running power for about 17 yards. Power is just our, our bread and butter. We pull a backside guard, we down block. And our, like I said, our big kids played well. We, have, we rushed for almost 300 yards, which I think is, it was, was a pretty good start to our season. Here, here's the play, I love, the reason I love this play, not so much for the touchdown pass from Brent to Courtney Gatlin. Courtney played about five, six plays the whole game. We tell our kids, be ready. We ended up playing, they ended up blitzing. We got lucky, and you know, we got fortunate in what they did, and we, and we uh, threw a touchdown. You know, Brent, Brent did a great job, but I love how our kids were always prepared. Mm -hmm. Courtney played six plays. Also, one of the plays got out there, you never know when it's gonna come to you. It came, but the game itself, you saw some of the big runs that we had. I think I just went over, we had six runs over, five runs over 15 yards. We had two passes over 20 yards. We used to call explosives. We want to try to get seven explosives, we got them. Nick Hunter played exceptionally well. Marcus Denham for a freshman gained almost 50 yards. Travis Jervis, our fullback, gained almost 50 yards. And we're laughing. I think we averaged about 5.6 yards a carry. Yep. And rushing for 292 yards or whatever it was was really got uh, the numbers right here. Yeah. 53 for 53 carries for 291 yards yeah. for 5.5 yards a carry. Not bad. Yeah, a lot of people laughing after the game. Some of the old guys who played here. I don't mean all them badly, but guys who've been here the last 10, 20 years came back to me. That was you know that was great. The big guys got fun. <laughs> and what we just try to do is instill the kids. Just be physical and, and just believe in what we're trying to do here. And I think the, when I started, when I got drenched with Gatorade after the game and the kids were all excited, <laughs> I think that's when I kind of broke down a little bit and just said, wow, these kids really believe in what we're trying to do. You right. never know what's going to come out of the victory. Sure. But the kids really believe and they played hard and they care about you and, you know, we care about them, of course. So, so offensively, I was really pleased with the effort, the running game. You know, we missed some big plays in the past game. We have to get better at that. And we had three holding calls by wide receivers. So I'm always going to throw a negative at you, John, just to make it real. <laughs> well, like awesome we got, we had a touchdown call back. We had two 20-yard yeah. plays called back because our, our wide receiver held. So we had a chance to go 400 yards of offense, just rushing. Well, your first uh, score, of course, there we saw the first two plays right. that led up to it, the fake punt, and then Jervis out of the backfield, and then Lukey right. punched it in. Right, Lukey put then, uh, six yards. Then Jervis, again, actually had yeah. a, big, a big hand in the second uh, touchdown. He punched it in for a, a one-yard run, but that kept a nice 15-play, 68-yard drive. What we're yeah. seeing here is a little bit different, and, and right. no offense or pros or cons to what was done no. in the past or what's done now, right. but we're seeing a little bit is a little bit longer drive. You yeah. keep the offense on the field a little bit more, rest your defense, and I think it showed because your defense played such a strong they game. They did. They had six plays. Coach Cree was laughing because we had six Plays. And Roosevelt Moore and some of our first seniors are like, what's going on? Because <laughs> last year they got caught in some situation where they had some three and a half back out there. And it's going to happen sometimes. It could oh, happen yeah. this week. But I think we have the ability to sustain a drive when we need to. I think you have to on both sides of the ball. Defense needs to get in and out quick. Sometimes the offense has to go out there and, and sustain it. I think we ran the ball 13 times in that drive or 12 times. I think we threw the ball twice that whole drive. It was just a Nick Hunter, Travis Jervis show with those guys up front just doing an exceptional job. First time around, actually run blocking for a while. Tri-State came back and scored late in the second quarter uh, to make it 13 to seven at halftime. What do you guys? What do you say to your team at halftime at this point? That drive they scored on was, I think, and I'm wrong, but I'm gonna throw out a number. I think it was 50 yards of penalties. Mm -hmm. It was two. We ended up like I told you, with 15 penalties for like 190 some yards or 150 yards. So I thought we're, we are disciplined. <laughs> believe it or not, we are disciplined. It's just they had two late. They had two retaliation hits. Just we pushed the kid back and we got pushed, which is we stopped that. There were none in the second half. Uh, two pass interference calls. One was good. I thought one was debatable, but it happened. And we had two offsides by D-line and line offsides. So we had six penalties in one drive. So honestly, at halftime, I told our guys, man, we can run the ball, which makes me feel good. And they have not done one thing on offense mm -hmm. besides us giving them penalties. So I really told the kids, 
let's cut out the penalty. That was pretty stern saying, we can't retaliate. That is just, that's bad. It doesn't look good. It's just not the way you play football. Stop retaliating. We can play football the way it's supposed to be played. And I wasn't nervous because I just thought we were in control. Mm -hmm. Some of the things I think we talked about earlier, too, is just the fact that your penalties, at least they're aggressive penalties yes. as opposed to just, you know, dumb right. and stupid mental mistakes. Yes. They're good, good plays where guys were going out there and playing hard. Exactly. They weren't trying to sit back and being lazy. Mm -hmm. They were trying to, I mean, our receivers were trying to get down. Our receivers didn't block a lot last year because they were always thrown. So they ended up, we just got to work on that concept. But it was, it was aggressive. And the retaliation hits, where's the push? It was just... And you just can't do it because the second guy always right. gets called. And the late hit, I think we we knocked, we we knocked our kicker out. We blocked the ball, though. I thought it was a bad call because we tipped the ball on the field goal. Yep. And that was a late hit on the kicker. And then the quarterback, Nick Zek, questionable, well, got him late. But it was right at that he, he threw it. But, quarter, you know, refs are going to protect quarterbacks, but I love Nick's effort. We ended up having 10 sacks or something. So mm -hmm. that quarterback, I think, might still be feeling it <laughs> come today. The third quarter, Tri-State came back and tied it up. Right. And uh, Two things happened in this drive, I think, that were very important to mention. First off, they only gained about 170 yards of total right. offense on the day. And I know one of them was 75 yards on one yeah, play. Right. On and, that drive, yeah. And, exactly. And that was one play that happened. And also, I think, after they scored, they had the missed extra point, which I mm -hmm. think was very key. Because instead of taking the lead, it was just 13 to 13. Yeah, because I wanted to say, we never got behind in this game. Mm -hmm. Being 13-13, I think we drove down, we scored a touchdown, which would have put us up 20 to 7. We got a holding call in the end zone. Then we missed a field goal. So our kids are a little down. Mm -hmm. They hit us with a 75 yard pass from their own whatever yard line. They score. So now our kids are like, geez, are we, what's going to happen now? Is this? Right. And they missed that extra point. So now our kids are like, hey, it's 13 right. 13. It doesn't sound big, but as I think sometimes the player is like, hey, we're still even. But I kept telling the kids, they aren't stopping us. If they were stopping us, I think it would have been like, but I didn't feel like they were stopping us. We came right back, I think drove all the way down. And that next drive, I think we scored a touch on the next drive, right. answering there to score. And, kind of got the momentum back because I thought their kids were tired. I kept telling our kids, they're the ones tired. You know, we're not tired. And so I, that's what made me feel good. And that's hard to tell sometimes in practice, yeah. tra translate from practice yeah. to game and you see never where know. you guys are conditioned right. wise. You never so. know. But I think one other thing too, again, you mentioned that uh, was nice is how you guys responded. They missed the extra point. On the very next drive, you guys came right. back. And of course, that was the play we just showed a little while yeah. ago when uh, Lupke hit. hit uh, Courtney Gallon. Yeah, it was yeah. like a five play, I or sort of five play drive or something. Yeah. Yep. So that uh, made it 20 to 13 uh, going into the fourth quarter. And uh, we're going to talk about the fourth quarter right. here and then talk about, of course, your standout yeah, defense exactly. on the day when we get back. We got to go to break right now. But when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, the, the last part of the game and then we're going to talk about the stellar defense and upcoming game versus Carthage this weekend. So stay with us. We'll be right back with more on the Lakeland locker room. This is the story about a group of kids who volunteered. Do something nice for someone. We fix stuff. Did some art projects with the kids. We fixed up this house. We worked in the woods. Cleaned up the park. Did something for the planet. We just did it. No other reason. You know what? It was great. At first, they didn't know each other. Well, that didn't last long. This guy is really funny. We? These are my new friends. Are you into it? Call 4 H or check out our website at areyouintoit.com. Thank you. Before you know it, she talks. Before you know it, she walks. Before you know it, she knows you. Before you know it, she has a heart. Before you know you're pregnant, when your baby's no bigger than a grain of rice. Before she's a twinkle in your eye. That's when you need to take folic acid every day. After that, it's too late to prevent some serious birth defects. Folic acid now, before you know it. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Lakeland Locker Room. Once again, I'm John Weber, joined today by Jim Zabrowski, the head football coach at Lakeland. Jim, we were just talking about the game recap here. Let's talk about the fourth quarter. You enter the fourth quarter with a 20-13 lead. First off, what are you thinking right at this point? Feeling pretty good, and the reason I was feeling pretty good is I thought they were tired. I thought we were controlling the line of scrimmage. I didn't really care about the score right at the moment. I thought we were controlling the line of scrimmage. So if we needed to do something in that fourth quarter in terms of eat up clock or or get a turnover stop, I thought we could. So I felt pretty comfortable. I was always, you're always nervous when you're only up a score because you always know one play could do it. But sure. I really thought the momentum was on our side. I think that big play to Courtney Gallon kind of, it kind of knocked the last gasp out of Tri-State and, and hopefully we, you know, we had a chance to put it away in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you did early on again. Oh, it's kind of midway through the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Cook nailed a 27 yard uh, field goal to make it 23-13. Right. I don't think that was the nail in the coffin yet, no. but it kind of gave you that, again, that it gave little bit. It gave us a two point, it gave us a two score cushion. Mm -hmm. I'm nothing against kickers. I hate field goals because we're kicking <laughs> field goals a lot. That I means we're, we're, we're not doing well in the red zone. And that drive, we bogged a little bit down there, but Mac came through and, and we missed an extra point earlier and a field goal, so I wasn't very happy with the uh, 
kicking concept, not so much just the whole concept of the kicking game mm -hmm. um, in that term. So we ended up getting it though, put us up by 10, ended up you know kicking off, stroking them on defense, getting the ball right back, and then we ended up with a it was really a fullback laden. Right. Uh, Vince Cooper, uh, who came in for that drive, and, and Travis Jervis just kind of took over, and, mm -hmm. and we just ran the ball right at him. I think the biggest thing about that, too, is, again, it's just a, it was just a rally-killing, game-ending yeah. drive. I mean, the fact that you scored was almost you know, pointless right. because at that point, you guys put a six, another almost six-minute drive up on the board, yeah. and, and they had no chance at yeah, that Yeah, we talk a lot about it. Uh, and we have, there's two types. There's a two-minute offense, which everybody knows. You're behind. Or at the end of the half, you need a touchdown, you need a field goal. Mm -hmm. And we call it a four-minute offense. Four-minute offense to us is there's between four, five, six minutes left in the game. Mm -hmm. We have the lead. Now our job is to hold on to the ball, eat up clock. So we work on that. We say, hey, man, ball security, and let's move the chains. And there was a couple, I think, third downs in there that we got, you know, which helped us out. I think early on in the game would help us out. I think we went for it on fourth down two or three times and got it. Mm -hmm. But that drive was just third. It was like a first and First and ten, second and six, third and two, first down. And I kept looking at the clock and going, geez, not my, you know, by the time I got in the, inside the 10-yard line, it was less than two minutes. He felt pretty good. Sure. Unless you turn the ball over and they returned it, that you were going to get this thing done. Right. Well, let's talk about your defense. Again, just a standout play, 178 total yards on the day. And an amazing thing is only 10 yards rushing, yeah. uh, which yeah. is, was just you know, obviously unbelievable. Um, I think we have some highlights that we're going to go to here in a minute, yeah. but anybody individually that really stood out for you? You know, we, we talk as a coaching staff. Even on offense, Andy, we said, we're not going to have that one. And this is no offense to our kids. We have great kids, and they're very good players. We don't have that, people, some call them a, a freak, like a Javon Curse or sure. somebody who's just so outstanding. you got to say, hey, what we have is a bunch of kids who are very good that play very hard, which I think makes our whole unit. And the guys know the guy next to them has to do his job. I mean, they trust each other. So as a defense, I mean, you can go to Shane Shrimp with three sacks. You can go to linebacking core, Rosie and, and Vidge had a sack or two. Rose of Moore had, had a good amount of tackles. And Ryan Vandaloo played well. And, and Sam Sheriner was running wild. Secondary played well. He got a couple of uh, pass interference calls, which hurt us. But they got nothing in the pass game besides that one uh, tight end pop pass when we missed two tackles. But I thought overall, just you can go right down the road. I mean, I can just list you Joe List and, and Shane Shrimp and Nick Zeck and Johnny Ferguson and, and Roosevelt Moore and Vidge, and I might get his name all, Mike Gregory came in there. They all just played as a unit very well. Mm -hmm. I just thought I kept seeing these bunch of blue and yellow jerseys just running after the ball carrier, and seeing five, six, seven guys. And the most, uh, the happiest I was, and this is no fun, <laughs> this is gonna sound bad, but I, I, I always tell the guy that if a quarterback makes it through the game without getting, if he wants to throw the ball without getting dinged or without taking at least punishment, you know, physical, clean, hard hits, you know, you're not doing your job. And I think with 10 sacks and that kid ended up leaving a little bit or had a mild concussion or we at least put pressure on him and, and did it clean and just played hard physical football. I think that, that was an, you know, an attribute to the whole defense. Great coverage and great, we didn't blitz a ton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when we blitzed, we got home. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and take a look yep. at the highlight reel here. I know we had a couple of defensive plays that we put together here for you. And you're gonna see, this is me. When you watch this, you're gonna see 11 guys out there. I think this is one, they're play actioning pass, and they, they ran a lot of three-man routes on us. So they tried to max protect. Here we're blitzing a little bit. We bring Jacob Vigilani out the end. Running back misses him, and Jacob gets a big sack. Jacob's special with 6'3", 235 pounds out there. He's going to make some running backs miss, plus he can run and running back over if he needs to. So we ended up bringing six. There were occasional times we bring six. We never brought more than six on a blitz. Here, great pressure. We twist. We get great pressure from the backside. David Ben's running about 100 miles per hour on the backside force the quarterback to throw the ball into the dirt with a great coverage. Here they're in their pro set, another play action pass. End up getting a, end up one of their few passes they completed, but the second they did a great job rallying that ball, Mark Edmund and Matt Swain, stroke that kid. If they're gonna complete a pass, you might as well stroke them once they complete it. Here's an outside run play, which they had a little, not much success with. That's Roosevelt Moore and Sam Scherner and Vandaloo on the outside just making plays. And I think when he was at McMurray, Coach Fry, they were an outside zone, inside zone running team. And he came in, and you may talk a little bit about this. I had no idea what he thought. Did he think that, hey, we're NAI, we're, NAI, we're try say we're just going to be able to go in there, do what we do at McMurray, and be successful? I, I didn't talk to him much before the game or after the game. It's pretty short, just kind of like, congrats, Jim, on your first win. I'll see you later. So he didn't say much about you know, the effort and so on. So not knowing what to expect, not knowing you know, what was going on, and they couldn't run the ball on us. Yeah. And then they had to try and throw it. 
and the quarterback completed a few passes, but when he completed them, either he got hit or the Kido Kai took a pretty good beating. And that's what we have to do. If we can keep controlling the run game, you know, and that's Coach Creek, Coach Mateer, Coach Kalsich, Coach Roberson, the defense staff did a great job preparing. And I just say, stop the run. You know, let's stop the run, make them throw the ball if they want to throw it. You know, we got to rally the ball and get the job done. So very happy with that side of the ball. Sometimes as a new coach, you may have seen this when you came to Lakeland too, the personnel fitting the system is, is right. important too. And I think that Fry was always accustomed. He always had that unbelievable running back in McMurray. Exactly. And it looked like this time he had the strong arm quarterback, but maybe didn't have the, the back yeah. in, the, in the field. And that's what some people said last year. I talked to Coach Fry even last year. He said the defense of McMurray was very good. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. He thought he said he had one. His passing game was average. He thought last year he said we had one stud running back. So I think he's... He'll get the stud, mm -hmm. and when we play him next year, I, I guarantee he'll have a, a stud, you know, or whatever back there. But they didn't have that one guy mm -hmm. that could just break it, you know, take it to the house. I think the one kid who scored two touchdowns was a, a, a stockier kid, did a good job of short yardage for him. But, but I think we played fast. But the most impressive thing on defense was I felt like we were running mm -hmm. very well, and they looked, like, they looked a little slow. No offense to them, but I just think we were, had more speed. And our kids up front won the physical battle. And once you win the physical battle, you got a chance. You won't always win the game. If you win the physical battle, you got a great chance to win a football game on both sides of the ball. That's all I tell the defense, be physical. Yep, and you guys obviously won the statistical battle. battle. I'm going to read some of the stats here. You guys had 22 first downs compared to 13. We already mentioned the total yardage. Um, you guys had 410 total yards compared to 178 for Tri-State. Um, time of possession is another one that stands out, which is something we haven't seen in the past. We yeah, had 36-24, yeah, exactly. 36 minutes to 24 minutes. Yeah, which is really huge. amazing. And, of course, we mentioned the sacks. You guys had just you know, an unbelievable defensive performance. Pretty good all around. What do you think you guys have to work on before we uh, talk about Carthage? A couple of things. we got to we got to minimize. We're like the Oakland Raiders right now. <laughs> we have 15 penalties for 150 yards. So we got to minimize the stupid penalty, like to say, and that's no offense to the kids. They know they can't retaliate, and, sure. and they know we can't hold downfield the wide receiver. We got to move our feet. We got to work on penalties. We can't line up offsides twice. So we got to work on penalties. Um, number two is, offensively wise, we have to be able to make big plays in the passing game. Because I truly believe the way the game panned out, uh, no disrespect to try to say, but as the game was going, once we controlled the the offensive line, we controlled their defensive line. We missed James Hayes open on post for a touchdown. We missed Sean Barron open for a touchdown. We had guys open that could have got the quick score. Because I think to become a very, very explosive offense, which I hope we will become sometime, you're going to have some sustained drive. But you also need those one or two play, bam, see a 70-yard sure. plays to get it rolling. And we missed those. And we had chances. Even the third play, the second play of the game, or third play, we had ver four verticals. We had two guys open. And Brent, you know, Brent threw a bad ball, and we didn't get it completed. So we have to work on quick strikes. When we do throw it, we got to be able to get the job done and, and get some home run shots because people now have to put a lot of guys in the box. They bring guys down, we got a chance to play action and go home run. So that's a big thing. Defensively, we got to work. We can't miss tackles. The big play they had, we didn't miss very many, but big play they had, you can't have an offense pinned down inside the 10 and give up a 75 yard pass. They know that. And that's, mm -hmm. so those are the things. Making sure once we get them down there, if we don't do something well on offense, keep them down there so they have to punt. And of course, the uh, the PAT field goal team, sure. just as a unit. And when, when I talk about that, you'll never hear me once ever say anything about a person or a player or whatever. It's just as a unit, mm -hmm. we gotta get that whole group together and play better. Yeah, it's gotta be an automatic. Yeah, exactly. Thing, so. so that's a, no offense. Maybe the the hold wasn't great, or the, or the snap or the protect. There's a lot of different things. So we just really, we harped on. We thought we were pretty good at it, and we weren't. We just you know we didn't kick the ball well as a group, so we got to do better with that. You know? well, when I got a new team coming up here, you got Carthage College this weekend. It's a new situation as well. You got right. a night game, 7 o'clock, which kind of throws things off yes, a little bit does. for us. But it's going to be completely different, too, because you got uh, Tim Rux as the head coach down there, right. but he has a totally new system. He has a new offensive coordinator, new right. defensive coordinator. I don't know if it's a new system, but you got to imagine that these guys coming in are going to bring in something different. Yeah, it is. it's uh, it's another you know crapshoot, mm -hmm. you know, per se. Just like Tri said, it was a little bit. We have an idea what they will do offensively and defensively. Um, new coordinators, you never know what, they, what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. I think what helps us, in a sense, is we're going to get better at what we do. Whatever they do, we're going to have to, we got to get better at what we do, not worry so much. I think as, a, as the year goes on, you're going to see us not worry so much about everybody else and worry about how can we make Lakeland better, mm -hmm. not how can we beat Carthage. Let's, let's play the best game we can. The m biggest improvement should come between week one and week two. Now, will that hold? I don't know. But I think we can correct the mistakes we made and we can have an opportunity. You know, hopefully play better. Cause I, I tell the kids a 10-step season, each step is, is as important as the next step. So we're on step one, trying to get step two, and hopefully this week we'll do it. 
Um, I don't know what's going to I think we're going to need to run the ball, of course. We're going to have to play action these guys. I think they'll play a lot of man coverage. It could open up big plays in the passing game. Offensively, we played Carthage when I was at Milliken for three years. Um, they're a two-back team, some one-back. They, they want to get physical. They're going to be all you know, geeked up and hyped up night game, first game. Sure. You know Carthage. They have 160 kids on the sideline <laughs> and all their black or uniform, whatever uniforms they have, all the, you know, all the money they have down there. And they're, they get all excited about their facilities. And it's a great opportunity because one of the goals for our program is we want to be you know, we ought to be one of the best teams in the state of Wisconsin. And the way you do that is play Wisconsin schools. So next two weeks we have that opportunity. So we're going to have to get ready for that first road trip. Besides, I think the uh, scrimmage helped us. But a night game, throw it off your schedule, you got a different deal. I think our kids will be excited to go down there and a quote-unquote power con You know how it is in sure. baseball, John. Mm -hmm. They're a CCI. Death. They're supposed to be a power conference team. Right. You know, and I like I tell our kids, hey, it's a, it's a football game. Let's go get some. Mm -hmm. I'll play those you know, whenever we want. I'll schedule them every year. We'll play them. Well, maybe the artificial turf will help you guys. Like you yes. said, you play fast. So. Could be. That's what I think it's going to help. Hopefully that rubberized stuff will make us look even faster. <laughs> That's right. That's true. Well, we got, you're getting a sign here that we've got to wrap it up. We're going to have to recap a little bit of what happened this week. And, of course, the football team, as we just talked about, won 30-13, getting off to a great start over Tri-State. Uh, the volleyball team had a great tournament. They finished in fourth place on their, in their tournament, but they, play, they had a nice young team playing against some of the nationally ranked teams, and it's going to help them in the long run. And finally, of course, the men's and women's soccer teams. The men's team went 1-1 one one this weekend, while the women's soccer team lost two overtime games in, in, in thrilling fashion. Uh, but if you get a chance, make sure you join us next week for the next edition of the Lake and Locker Room, and we'll see you next time.